Good morning, everyone. My name is Victor, um, and it's my privilege to be leading you all in a time of worship today. For those who are new or those who have recently joined us, welcome to Bethel. And we, I, we, I invite you, or we invite you as Bethel, to join us for our fellowship uh, lunch after the worship service. Before uh, we begin this time of worship, let us come to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning to offer you our worship. As we come to you to offer our worship, help us learn to see that you are deserving of praise. Help us know you more, that we may offer you a higher level of praise. Help us learn from your word later on that would help us praise you even more. I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. My reason for offering thanksgiving to God this morning is because of his great goodness. Because of the memories of his great goodness, uh, which has been there for me in the past. In Psalm 145, verse 7, it reads, They shall utter the mem memory of your great goodness and shall sing of your righteousness. And also in verse 9, which reads, The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. For me, I can trace God's hand of goodness, which has been there for me over the last year as I look back. I see his goodness in the chance for me to go back home in December last year. This is the first time I've had the chance to go back home since coming to Perth, which was in 2014. So this is four and a half years ago. I, I stay in a rental house, and currently this is my seventh uh, rental house, which I've been staying in. And moving houses from one rental to another is always challenging for me. And honestly, it makes me long for a home of my own, actually. So I was really glad that I had the chance to go home to see my parents and stay, get to stay at least at their house. But the great irony was that when I arrived home, um, when I was just settling in uh, for the night, my, my mom came and told me that uh, according to our tradition, I am now old enough to head my own house. Um, <laughs> I am old enough to to have that to practice that responsibility, and she was she was proud of it. She was happy to see that I've, uh, I've I'm a bit more grown up, but to, so she had already arranged for a rental for me to stay in. <laughs> so uh, this was the last thing I, I was hoping to hear. But uh, other than that, I was glad to at least stay close by to 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 my parents. <laughs> yeah. I thank, but uh, I thank God that I didn't return home empty-handed, because my my parents paid uh, the the tuition fee was quite dear for my parents to pay uh, for me to come and study here, and I thank God for His grace and His inspiration that I was able to do well in school. My doing well in school meant a lot to my parents, and it really brought them uh, joy, and so I, I I thank God for this. I also thank God for a chance to be able to develop a closer relationship with my parents. I left home when I was 18, and I wasn't as mindful of relating with my parents. But with this chance, I got to know a bit more about them. I got to know of their plans. I got to know of their aspirations, their concerns, and their troubles, which helped me relate with them a bit better. And it's not just with my parents, but also my nieces and nephews who are now a bit more grown up. I got the chance to relate with them as well. And I thank God that we, I had this chance to relate with them and I can now keep in touch with them and that they won't grow up seeing me as a stranger. So um, these are the things I'm thankful for. So I thank God for his goodness and not just in having the chance to go home, but a chance to strengthen my relationships back home. The first song we are going to sing is, I Sing the Mighty Power of God. HWC 59. I like how the author praises God as he recognizes God's attributes, which are seen through what God does. 
In the second stanza, he fitly, fittingly sings of God's goodness seen through his provision and throughout creation. So will you join me in singing our first song together? Thank you for singing our first song. Another recent memory through which I've experienced God's goodness is in last year's youth conference. I thank God for the connection which we can share with brethren, regardless of our background. Last year's youth conference was the first time for me in Singapore and also attending Bethany Church. The first moments for me during youth conference were quite uh, tough because at every moment I would uh, meet a new person and it got to the point where I would lose track of the people I met. Uh, I would end up meeting the same people again and I was still unable to recognize them, which, which was a bit uh, embarrassing. But they, they had no trouble remembering me. <laughs> yeah. Although the environment and the people are completely new, uh, we could still share a connection through our faith. Whether it is through hearing of them as they chair or talking to them during fellowship, lunch, and dinner, it was encouraging to hear of the reality of God in their lives. My own story of salvation and God's grace was shared with others too. Somehow his grace had been there for them during their time in university. Others of how they have learned, they see God's leading and have learned to trust in him even after their university as they look for their next phase in life. Some also in how they seek to live a life beyond themselves and look to um, touch the lives of others. It was amazing to see the connection of, this connection of faith with many different people. People whom I've only known for a week uh, felt like I've known them for a really long time. And this connection was much deeper than with the friends I, compared to the friends I've, I've, I have at university whom I've known for, for years. This brethrenship we share is truly a work of God, and the friendships that I made there continue to be an encouragement to me, even long after youth conference. The second song I would like us to sing is How Firm Our Foundation, which is in HWC 275. Last year's youth conference was about laying a strong foundation for our lives, and I thank God for the common foundation we share with our brethren at Bethany a foundation which allows us to share a common faith. The author of this song praises God for this firm foundation which is in the Lord Jesus Christ and his word. Let us also join in singing praise to God with our second song. Thank you for singing our second song. Taking time to recall God's goodness in the past helps me find assurance of trusting him in the future. Lately, I have been struggling with a fear of uncertainty that has been very hard to put off. It comes up when I go to sleep, when I wake up, and at different times of the day. There is uncertainty as I continue to look for full-time work. There is also uncertainty as this year I'm involved in new areas of ministry that are uh, not in my usual comfort zone. Uncertainty whether I will really be able to last out serving in these areas. And I realize the danger of this uncertainty is that it threatens to take away uh, any joy and gladness that I had. I also realize I'm beginning to lose the sense of excitement that I had for each day. But I'm thankful that although there is so much uncertainty, I can be certain of who God is. I can be certain of his goodness, his great goodness, which is behind all he does. I have experienced God's goodness in the past, and because of this, I choose to focus on his goodness for the future rather than on my fears. I choose to offer thanksgiving to God this morning for the assurance that I can find in his goodness. This truth echoes in the last song that we are going to sing, Day by Day, which is in HWC 56. On the first stanza of this song, it sings, He whose heart is kind beyond all measure gives unto each day what he deems best. 
lovingly its part of pain and pleasure, mingling toil with peace and rest. I find great encouragement in this truth, the truth of this song, knowing that even in times of difficulty, God remains good and his heart remains kind. This is my reason for offering thanksgiving this to him, thanksgiving and praises to him this morning. So let us all rise and sing our last hymn together day by day in HWC 56. Thank you. You may be seated, and I'd like to pass this time to Pastor Chris. Good, Victor. Thank you for that. That was refreshing. It was just so good to hear the reasons why we why we praise the Lord the way we do. And that is special. That really, really is. Okay, we're going to pray together, and then we are going to wrap up this series of messages on praise uh, this, this morning. And really looking forward to sharing with you how we can really, how do we make praise? And the word is beautiful. Okay, now before I do that, just a few announcements to make. Uh, just one, really. Uh, just a reminder to all who are serving in the children ministry. Next Sunday, we meet okay, at 1 p.m. We won't have cat class then. We have catechism class this afternoon at 1. But next Sunday, being the first Sunday uh, of the new month, we will, I will be meeting with all who are involved in the children ministry. Okay? This is for all who are involved in children ministry. Please take note of that. Right? Okay, well, let's pray together and ask the Lord to help us to understand how we can really make praise beautiful. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for your word given each week to help us understand what praise is. And Lord, as we listen, as we practice, may our goal is to make praise truly beautiful in your sight. We ask that you would help us to understand this this morning, that we can offer such praise to you. We pray for your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's turn to the book of Psalms once again. We are going to take a look at Psalm 147. And this is an important topic. This is like going back to basics. It really is. Worship is like the basics of what it means to be a Christian, right? What does it mean to part of being, having faith in God, our Christian faith, is worship. And it's so good from time to time to go back to basics, to learn what praise is, why we praise, how we should praise God and worship Him, and it is rightly so. Right? And so it's good for those who are new. Those good for those who have just found faith in God. It is also good for those who have been Christian for many, many years, and sometimes we forget the basics. We sort of take it for granted is there. It's just important from time to time, go back to basics. Right? And then from there, this principle, can we deepen it? Okay? Now, let's take a look at Psalm 147. We are going to devote a bit of time on the first verse. Okay? Now, why do we praise, sing praise to God in worship? At a very basic level, now we read, Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God. Very simply, it is good. It is the right thing to do, right? He is our God. We are to worship Him. He is worthy of all our praise. It is a right and good thing to do, isn't it? That's one. Two, there are personal reasons. Victor shared some. And we all have our personal reasons. If God has been so good to us, it is wrong to not worship Him with a heart of praise. Obviously, if He has spared our lives, 
if he has heard our prayers, if he has blessed us, if he has, you know, and the list can go on. And we have seen in many, many Psalms, personal reasons. What is your personal reason? And it is the right and it's a good thing to do. That's the first part of it. Okay, right? It is good to sing praises to our God first. Now, second part. Let's take a look. For it is pleasant. Huh. That's the next part. Basic level, it is good. Here's the next part. It is a pleasant experience. Now, how can praise be really a pleasant experience? It is a pleasant experience when you are engaged in it. Right? Where your heart is there, your mind is there, and you know what is going on. It is not a pleasant experience for anything if you don't know what's happening. Right? Obviously. Okay? So if you go and watch a movie with someone, and the person doesn't know what is happening. It's a very, not pleasant, painful experience because every 10 seconds, what's happening? What's going on? Who is this person? Why is this person doing here? Why the... It's painful, right? And the person is there, and the person is sleeping. How was the movie? Uh, very restful. Obviously. So praise is not going to be pleasant for you if you're not engaged. If your heart is not... See, this is what praise is meant to be. Psalm 111, Psalm 111. Praise the Lord with all your heart. Is your heart there? Right? I will sing praise in, in the midst of the congregation. Sure. It's a pleasant experience for you if you are engaged in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit, and whatever it is, you're just engaged. But if you are disengaged, which is, can happen, is it going to be pleasant? You, you don't know what's happening. For the next one hour, you also don't know what's happening. What happened? So while you're here, let it be pleasant. Isn't it? So a group of my cousins went over to Melbourne just to watch this Harry Potter uh, the, the, the musical, not, not the video. They flew to Melbourne to watch the movie. That is crazy. They are crazy rich Asians. <laughs> right? No, they watched the... It's not here in Perth, so they went over there, and all of them I understand except one, Alicia Ma. I said, Alicia, are you sure? First, do you know who Harry Potter is? See, this is me second-guessing her. Unfortunately, I am too presumptuous. So I thought, this Chinese ed person, very shy, surely she, you know what? And I was told she had the most wonderful time there. Wow, that is interesting. So I asked, did you know what was happening? So of course. See, I don't read doesn't mean I don't watch videos. Ha! Huh. See, you need to know what's happening. Right? See, some of you don't know what's Harry Potter, so it's all right. What are you talking about? But please know, whoa, this is praise. This is God. How to praise. This is why we're learning. That we may engage our heart, our mind, our spirit. You know what? You're going to have a pleasant experience if you do. Now, here's the second part. Here's another part. Each one got two parts. Right? When you're part of it. Musicians. See, this comes up in the Psalms. Sing to the Lord, praise Him with harp, with lute, with all the musical instrument. You are part of that praise offer to God. Whether you are a musician, whether you are singing, whether you are giving an offering, you know what? It can be a very pleasant experience. But when we are not part of it, when we are not engaged, praise is not pleasant. For you and for God. Remember, for God. He's got to look at you and say, what is wrong with you? Maybe I shouldn't bless you. Because you have showed no interest. You have not engaged. You are not even in being thankful. What? 
right? So the idea of pleasant goes both ways. Is it a pleasant experience for you? It should be. Is it a pleasant experience for God? Please let God have a pleasant experience listening to your praise. And it's possible. And it's wonderful. This is what we want to take a look at, okay? So praise, good. Praise, pleasant. Now, here's the next, next part. And this is the focus of this morning's message. Beautiful. Praise is beautiful. Is our praise beautiful in the sight of God? Have we ever thought about that? Now they say beauty is in the, what is beautiful to God? What is God looking for that is beautiful? He can say this is beautiful. Right? And to us, we look for different things that appeals to us that is beautiful. Some people, they beautify themselves and they go and spend a lot of money and inject here, inject there, and they end up looking like a goldfish permanently. <laughs> to me, that is not beautiful. I have no idea why that is beautiful. You know why the lines are there for? When you sweat, it's ca captured there. <laughs> right? But if you're so smooth, it goes straight to your eyeball and you, ah, see? Let God design you the way it was meant to. And why would you... You know, like, very hard to eat. You know, this is why. And to some beauty. And you look at the things and you just shake your head. Seriously. Why like that? Right? And you know, you tell people, sometimes people should really dress their age. Now, have you heard of this? You know, you are a sheep. Don't dress like a lamb. <laughs> what is... Now, here's a story. So you read stories like that, and you really wonder what people look for that is beautiful. Now, there is an old Italian story of a king that was looking for a beautiful wife. And there he was, and he searched his kingdom, and he couldn't find one white person that would his standard that he would marry. He could look everywhere and he couldn't find. So he sent his most trusted counsellor, you go and find. If you don't find me a beautiful wife, you die. Now This is unfortunate with kings. And so he was very scared. Okay, don't do things like that. And then he went out and looked and looked and he... Everywhere. He went to the, 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 the wealthy people, couldn't find. They all got Botox. <laughs> right. They went to here, nothing there. All right, where? And they found in the most strange place. There was a very old cottage. And then he looked at it. There was two people, you know, two person there. He saw the hands working, spinning, and the spinning wheel. Couldn't see the body, every, everything else. Couldn't, couldn't see. And saw they were the most beautiful hands he has ever seen. So in his mind, wow, this person must be so beautiful. <laughs> All right. And so he asked, will you be interested to meet the king? And you know what? If you can please, the, the king would marry looking for beauty. Now, in reality, this person was 80 years old and the sister was 90 years old. In reality. But for whatever reason, some people just got very smooth hands, you see. And then told a fib and said, actually, I'm 15. And the other is 20. And so he says, okay, now, tell the king I would come, but I cannot see, I cannot have the sun. Right? I have to veil myself, we'll cover everything up, and the sun must not shine on me, otherwise I turn black. See? And so, okay, done. And so there he was, and brought, you know, at night I will see you, only in the guise of moonlight. And so the king was there, and only saw the hand, and wow, married this woman. And on the wedding night, and 
the moonlight was very bright and he saw his old lady. He was so angry. She, he threw her... Now, this is some strange Italian story, okay? So, threw her off the balcony and she clung on. And then she called for help, help, and then fairies attended to her and turned her into a beautiful, youthful-looking princess. Now, this is where it gets weird. <laughs> And so the king saw her and said, I must be blind, and rescued her and was very happy. Now, the sister was very angry. How come you were able to and, and curse you? I'm going to seek the same thing. I'm going to do the same thing. And so the sister said, I'll tell you what actually happened, okay? Don't tell anyone. I actually skin, take off my skin, and then my youthful skin regenerated. Ha, huh, really? Yes. So the sister did it and died. And that was the end of the story. I read it and I'm like, what? You know, you know something, you know, this, is exa you know, this is strange. What are you looking for? Now, these are not bedtime stories you should tell your children, okay? Just please don't use this for kids uh, for bedtime. We can, you know, there are strange stories out there. But the question is, what is beautiful? What are you looking for? Now, bigger question, what is God looking for? He is not looking for your beautiful hands. Right? He is the king and he looks for this. What is God looking for now? That is a challenging thought, interest, important thought. Now, let's take a look at Psalm 147 because this is important. Okay? What is beautiful in the sight of God who is described here? right in this passage in verse 2 all the way to 6. Remember, this person. If you talk to a person that got no taste, <laughs> very hard. But if you talk to a person that knows his stuff, what is he looking for in beauty? Now, look at this person. Look at God. Here is a God, the Lord builds Jerusalem. You are talking to a master architect. His, he is obviously, you're talking about, how can we offer beauty to God, right? You are talking about a person that builds. He built Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted. God makes things beautiful all the time. He heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds. Wow. You're talking about a person like this described, a God who is described here. And you're going to wonder, how can I bring praise to a God that is... He does things beautiful. He builds. He heals. He brings restoration. He cares for people. Now, look at... Go on further. He... What else? He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by name. Now that is pretty amazing. We look at the stars and wow, that's beautiful. You can't count them all. And here is God who gives them names. Right? Uh, uh, Nix and Sukhi's son, Lucas, is an amazing in how he, he names all the planets. And he knows some of the names of the stars. And this boy is a young little guy. I also don't know the names of the planets, it, the, some of the stars, and in order anyway, and he's just fascinated. But can he count all the stars and, uh, and name them all? See, it just tells you, how are you going to impress a person who is like God? What beauty will you offer him that he hasn't seen at all? Right? You, you watch those things, like, here is a famous judge. You want to present something beautiful, and has he seen it all? He's seen it, seen it, seen it. What can you do that is going to be beautiful in the sight of God, in the sight of this God, right? He, call, he calls the stars, he, he knows them, he names them, Great is our Lord, mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. Wow. 
really challenging to please, huh? what is going to be beautiful in His sight? He has, in terms of understanding, infinite. In terms of power, mighty. You see, you need to, we need to know, what is God looking for? And the challenge is to say, well, beauty, praise, make praise beautiful in His sight. Now, we really need to understand what brings delight, what brings pleasure, what God thinks is truly beautiful. And that's a great challenge, right? Now, described here, he, right? He lifts up the humble and, and so and so forth. Now, we need to know at, a, at least what God takes pleasure in. What pleases Him, in other words, right? Really high standard. This is a person who, this is a God who builds Jerusalem. He's a God who gathered, restore, He makes that which is not, you know, broken and He restores it, beauty. Wow. He is a great God. He is, look at Him, in understanding. What praise can you offer to God that He is going to say, well, that's beautiful. Have we ever thought about that? And so, take a look at this. First, we need to understand what does God delight in and what He doesn't delight in. Now, that's the first part. Okay, well, let's take a look. Verse 10. He does not delight in the strength of horse, the horse, nor takes, and he takes no pleasure in the legs of a man. Now, what, what on earth does that mean? The horse and the man here describes the military power, might. Right? In the own, own days, this is the display of one's military might and beauty, and they have a military parade. The chariots will be brought out. The soldiers, they do the same thing today. Right? When they have national days in certain countries, watch, they bring out all their things here. To them, milit this is beautiful. This is pride. Do you think God delights in the might of man? in your power, in your strength. And the psalmist is right. He takes no such delight. Well, I'm going to be strong. I'm going to be powerful. And God is going to be pleased. Not really. Now, watch. What, what, what does God take pleasure in? In verse 11. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear Him. That is what He takes pleasure in. The Lord takes pleasure in those who hope in His mercy. That's what He takes pleasure in. To those who fear Him, regard Him, in other words, there is reverence towards God, and there are those who hope in Him, in His mercy. Now, that is a good starting point. We're not talking beauty yet. At least it catches the attention of God. Now that I delight in. But what is beauty? What is beautiful in the sight of God? Now, we need to turn to another psalm, and that's Psalm 33. Okay, we're going to have to turn to a few psalms here to just to understand verse 1 of Psalm 147. Okay, turn to Psalm 33, because there's your answer, actually because this is a very clear um, reference to what is beautiful in the sight of God. Right? Now, Psalm 33 and verse 1, we read. Okay? And so here is an unknown, another, same, is it the same person? We don't know. But again unknown, and he says, Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for praise from the upright is beautiful. There you go. There is your answer. What is God looking for that to Him is beautiful? A joy that is genuine and uprightness. This is the idea of upright. We'll look at what upright means. 
later on. But it begins here. And there's your clue. Praise from the upright in God's eyes is beautiful. And that's an important question and challenge. Do we understand uprightness? What is upright? Well, we know it is one, not wicked. Right? We know it is one, not hypocrisy. There is a genuine heart here. Now, we need a bit more uh, to, to understand that. Look at the idea of upright. And then we read, Praise the Lord with the harp, make melody to Him, an instrument of ten strings. Now, this is skill. Play to Him a new song. Play skillfully with a shout of joy. This person knows what is beautiful in God's sight. Obviously, is skill required? Yes. And if the person is capable of honing that skill, make it beautiful. Now, upright. What is that? Look at the person's understanding. Verse 4, the word of the Lord is right. There you go. How do I know? What does it mean to be upright? You go to the word of the Lord. Right? And all his works are done in truth. So what is upright? One, because God himself is upright. Look at his words. They are truth. Look at his works. They are truth. His word, they are right. He loves righteousness and justice. The whole earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. You got to look at God to understand what he is looking for. That to him, this is beauty. He looks for truth. He looks for that which is truly righteous and just and good. That is upright. Right? Okay? Now, this is important for us to to consider very, very carefully. Now, what does it mean to practice uprightness? Let us go to another psalm. We, We go back. Psalm 15. This entire psalm is on the whole idea of a person who is upright and a person who is righteous. Okay? Now, let's take a look at Psalm 15. And it begins with a question. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? The answer, he who walks uprightly. You see there? He who works righteousness. So the person's lifestyle is called into place. The person's deed is examined. This is what God looks for. The lifestyle and the deeds as well. What are they? He speaks truth in his heart. He's, in other words, not a hypocrite. There's genuineness there, right? He who does not backbite with his tongue Right? Backbite. You bite someone on the back and leave teeth mark there. See, how you use your words, is that upright or not? He doesn't do this. He's not going to do evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. Now, this is all describes what uprightness is. In whose eyes a vile person is despised. He's not going to commend a person who is vile. Right? Remember, that which is good, that which is true, that which is right. He honors those who fears the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. This person has integrity. He makes, he is a person of his word. He says it, he does it. Even to his own hurt, he will do it. Now, there are very few people who do that. They twist and turn. They say one thing, they do another thing. They don't keep their promise. Not this person. This person says it, you know what? I will do it. This person makes a promise, he keeps the promise. This person is not going to put out his... How does he handle his money? He's not going to put it out his money at usury. Now, what is usury? 
right? Now, this is not about making profit here. There's nothing wrong with doing well and making a living and making a profit. This is really fleecing people. You inflate it, you give bad product, and you rip people off, and you make money, and you disappear. This is not a person who is upright. Does God see? Yes. Will God accept the praise of a person who is going to do things like that? No. Is it beautiful to him? Ugly. What is beautiful? How you live. Upright. Look at this very care. He does not take a bribe against an innocent person. Right? The person is, you know, is able to and he's going to bribe and make the person suffer. No. You do that. That is not upright. And we read, last part of, he who does all these things shall never be moved. You know why shall never be moved? If you're upright. One, your praise is beautiful in his sight. Two, the Lord is pleased and he will bless. But if this is not beautiful in his sight, this is not pleasing, he will not bless that worship offered to him. Right? So, Worship, praise, it is good because it's the right thing to do. To offer to God. What will you offer to one who is called God? You watch how people offer things to those whom are, wow, this person is a VIP. This person is a royal. They offer very carefully. It has to be perfect. It has to be beautiful. And that's a strange thing to me, where people offer anything will do. Anything. God will just take anything. Please, God is not going to just take anything. But we got to know what does God delight in? Not your strength, because He's a mighty God. Not your understanding. You compare your understanding with His. His is infinite. Not how much you have built up in life. Look at what he's built. Not what, how many people you have helped. Look at how he helps. What is he looking for? To him that is beautiful. Well, one, he will take pleasure in those who really hope in his mercy and those who fear him. And to, to those who are upright, that praise described here, this person, to God, it is Beautiful. And we all can do that. We all can say, you know what, this is what it means to be upright, to be offer to God praise that is beautiful. Obviously. But let's do that. And this whole series of message conclude. How shall we bring praise to God? We learn about, we sh you know, why? Of course, He's our God. It is a good thing. It is a right thing to do. You know, it is pleasant. In our heart, we want to worship God with all our heart. That's, that's good. That's wonderful. Now, here's the challenge. Beauty. And we need to know what is beautiful in the sight of God. What we say against our brethren, against our family member, behind their back, God knows. He knows. To him, is that beautiful? No, it's not. What you say under your breath, he knows. Wisely, you know what, God? You, you cleanse me. You, I hope in your mercy. You give to me words that will be a blessing and joy, and I am going to sing to you praise. I'm going to hone skill if you, musician, hone those skills. Make it beautiful. Work at it. You know, to do something beautiful requires a lot of everything. Doesn't it? Right? Talk to anyone. It's not easy to make anything beautiful. I, I'm speaking by experience. <laughs> you look at it. How come mine looks like this and the, this looks like that? Mine is so ugly. Right? And the person, wow, then just because it's a mask, it's still, you know, I saw something really quite incredible. Um, the other day, I brought my son, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
uh, out and we had a, went to a cafe. And then in the cafe, I saw this work of art that someone was selling. They were selling things. This cafe sells all the artwork and art, you know, whether it's pottery or painting or whatever, in our community, in our suburb. I did not know there were so many artistic people in, around our area. Certainly not one in my house. Well, I can't speak for the rest. I'm talking about myself. I'm not the one of them. And I saw this art. It's amazing. This person made, you know, coils, those fish, out of paper. And on the picture, it's like 3D. You look from afar, you're like, it's like fish swimming. It's so alive. So I said to the shop owner, is this person a local artist? And you know, where is he from? Is he um, from China, from Japan? Where, where is this person from? He said, no, it's, a, it's an engineer that lives around here and he does this co to, to connect with his culture. Well, I'm trying to connect with my culture and I can't do that. <laughs> you know, the person is interested. It brings, you know, it's pleasant experience for him to do something. See, when you do something beautiful, it's going to be a pleasant experience for you too. You enjoy it better. You know, do you look at it? Wow, this is beautiful. Now, if you look at it and you say, wow, so ugly, nobody else is going to think it's beautiful. Of course. Right? Some be people have really beautiful handwritings. Tom, where are you, Tom? There he is. Tom, I look at his handwriting and he... I, I, Yes, he is. He takes notes as I speak. And he is uh, uh, among our congregation, among the older ones, and he's got beautiful handwritings. Some of our young people got beautiful handwritings. Now, I say that because, see, those who don't have can only admire. I look at it, oh, so beautiful. You, you, your writing looks like font, you know like computer font. Mine begins small, then ends up big. Mine begin big and end up small. And so my son, when he does his handwriting, and, and you know, in the classroom, I look at it. I won't say bad or good. I look at it a little bit like mine. <laughs> <laughs> Don't comment. Don't say, so ugly. It backfires on you. Right? See, we, put, we should put effort. And the mummy is trying to say, son, you know, you've got to write it like that, rub it out, write it, and he's going to make his handwriting beautiful, which is wonderful. I'm trying to. Right? I understand that. See, we put effort into making things beautiful, and I hope we do. We do. You know, people look at it, they want to be the best in their trade, they want to stand out because you know what? They take pride, they take pleasure in their work, make it beautiful. And I want to encourage, the, you know, if you're in your work, make it beautiful. That's how you can honor the Lord. Your life, God give you, make it beautiful. And I don't mean go and spend on all the plastic, you look like a plastic person. No, no don't mean. Have a beautiful soul. Have a beautiful spirit. You know, you are kind. You are a, a person of integrity. You are a person that a wise person. You are a dependable. Make this life beautiful because God spared your life, gave it back to you. You know what? I've got one life. We are going to die. It's a question of when. But what do you do if your life counts? It counts for you. It counts for your family. It certainly counts for God. So do it. Make it beautiful. You want to cook something? Make it beautiful. Right? I, I remember when the Japanese are fantastic at this. They really know how to make things beautiful. You know they do. You look at the way they present their meals. It is not like how we do our cooking. Everything is nice and and I was wondering whether this is only at restaurant. It isn't, you know. In the family, and they prepare their lunch for their kids, they have all the little division, the fake plant that is there, the little things, and they make it beautiful. And I'm thinking, that is just lunch. It's going to go inside. 
Nobody is going to recognize it. See, that's us. We don't know what we're looking for. To them, it's part of them. Do it, do it beautiful. And that's a good principle. You don't have to be Japanese. Just be Christian. God is a God who delights in beauty. Look at how He builds. Look at how He works. Look at how He cares. Look at how He made things. Right? He made you the way you are. Fearfully, wonderfully made. If we would only treasure it. Don't be what the world thinks beauty is, young people. Skinny like anything. Look like you haven't eaten for two months. That's beauty. The wind blow and you die. <laughs> right? Don't. What is true beauty? Let there really be beauty. You know, be, but be healthy. No, okay, go swing to the other extreme and look like, oh, don't. Right? Don't. Just be really. How does the Lord? But when you understand God, when you know God, watch. His that what he sees, who he is, will rub onto you. And you begin to see beauty in a lot of things. And let's offer to God praise that is beauty. Because he is a beautiful God. Shall we? Let's pray together. Our Father, we just stand in awe at your beauty the beauty of creation, both in the world and its nature and its power and it, your infinite wisdom is seen in how you create the most delicate of things in how you work in the life of a sinner from darkness to light. To change a person like Paul from a person who was so filled with anger and hate to an apostle of love and only you can do that. And we pray, Father, that we will be a person and a people who delights in your beauty, who want to offer praise that is beautiful in your sight. Let our praise bring joy to your heart. Let our praise bring pleasure to you. And we ask that you would bless the offering that we give. May we give it with great gladness, with great joy in our hearts. We will pray that you would encourage us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's give to prepare an offering for the Lord this morning, and we are going to conclude in this, with this hymn together, and it is a wonderful hymn, To God Be the Glory. I really want to encourage you to look at this. Really know the Lord. Know His Word. Like Psalm 33, you know, the Word of God comes up again and again. It will affect the way you speak. Speak beautifully. Right? Have a, you know, words that are beautiful, and your heart is beautiful, your spirit is beautiful. And I know this is, you know, it just brings delight to God. And He sees beauty in your praise. Let that beauty bring much joy to the heart of God. That's what praise is. It is to off, be offered to God. What kind of praise do you want to offer God? Obviously, please, of course, we must offer Him that which is beautiful. Well, this morning, let's sing together. Don't just sing this song. We all know this famous hymn, To God Be the Glory. But let's sing with a better understanding. With all our heart, our heart is engaged, our mind is engaged. We know it's a good thing. It can be a pleasant experience. Let it be pleasant. To us, to God, let it be beautiful. Praise is beautiful. And we do that. We've really understood Psalm 147 verse 1. Okay? Let's rise and sing this together.
with all our hearts this morning, this glorious hymn. Beauty will always stand the test of time. Like any beautiful architecture, it doesn't change with trend. It's always there. That's beauty. And so is faith and that spirit of faith. And so like this hymn, to God be the glory. Let this song be sung beautifully. That's how singing should be every week. Really, let, let it begin from here. Let praise be here every week. Be beautiful. Right? Let's, let's do that. May, and may the Lord bless us. May the Lord really bless because He sees this and He says, wow, that is beautiful. Okay, well, let's pray together. And now may this beautiful God of ours, who makes all things beautiful in the world and in our life, if we allow Him to work at it, bless us. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ enable us to offer praise that is beautiful to this great God of ours. May the word of the Lord dwell in us richly. And we may sing anew, afresh, a beautiful song to our God. May the Spirit of God inspire us with a song to sing every single day when we behold the beauty of God. And may that song truly bring gladness to our own heart and to the heart of our wonderful God, now and forevermore. Amen.